Hey folks, Ben here from Lions Wormworks. So today I'm going to try to uh, empirically unpack uh, one of the enduring debates and mysteries of composting and vermicomposting, and that is chemicals, bleaches, and chlorine in shredded paper, um, particularly office paper. So what I've done is sample several tests of our uh, municipal water. I've got exactly two liters of our municipal water here. We're really lucky in my little mountain town that we have extremely safe, extremely soft uh, water. So even right out of the tap, our uh, my municipal water has, uh, by my testing, um, less than 0.1 parts per million of uh, total and free chlorine. And I'm testing that with the same kit that our health department uses to test uh, pools and our, our muni supply, uh, as well as confirming it with my spa kit, uh, just to make sure. So what we're going to do today, I have a uh, enough of this cross-cut shredded. Um, this is just office paper. This is actually from our Tom Clerk's office as we're shredding some records. So I think, you know, in terms of a torture test, um, this, this should be pretty suitable uh, to see if it really does liberate any chlorine into solution. Now, we know that, of course, that uh, the paper is bleached during the manufacturing process. Historically, this process um, utilized and indeed released a lot of dioxins, uh, which are definitely a, a chemical that you don't want in your water source and particularly in your compost. Uh, more recently, industrial paper is typically bleached using a uh, an oxygen, a peroxide process. Uh, so theoretically, it should be safer. Um, I should have some paper of mixed age and provenance here. <laughs> so let's see what we can elucidate. I'm going to take our uh, water uh, of a known um, chlorine content, and then I'm going to add this paper to it. Chlorine and bleaches are um, really volatile, should enter solution pretty quickly. So I'm, what I'm going to do is add shreds um, to saturation, like to fill the, fill the water. We'll test it. We'll let it sit for an hour just to make sure that there isn't something yet to come into solution. Test it again, and uh, and I'll share the results. Okay, folks, here we go. Here's our paper. That's just what she looks like. Just gonna get pretty much as much as I can in there so as to maximize whatever um, will dissolve into solution into the water. Yeah, okay. Let me grab just a little bit more here. Okay. All right, so let's just let this uh, sit for a minute. Um, let anything dissolve into solution that is going to, um, and we'll catch up in a moment. Okay, well, it's been a hot minute. We've got our uh, paper soaking here. We only need nine milliliters uh, to perform this test. So this is the Taylor Narrow Range uh, Water Quality Testing Kit. That's been serving me well for a good number of years. So let's see if we can schloop out, oh, poop, um, nine milliliters without getting any paper. Hooray. Okay, let's... Now this is a... Uh, accurate but colorimetric test so I don't know if I'm going to be able to show you but um, just need to add a couple reagents here Five. oh boy let's see okay now we got to uh, invert and on initial analysis that appears See if I can show you guys here. Yeah, look at that. No change whatsoever. The tiny hue that you may be seeing is the uh, about a tenth of a um, tenth of a part per million of chlorine that is in the original source material. So let me give this about an hour, and we will revisit this test. Well, that's our results. Uh, so to my mind, it looks 
pretty apparent that there there's not a significant chlorine compound contribution from sh shredded paper. You know, at least not this sample. I feel like this one was pretty representative, and just from people that I've that I've spoken with and other um, experiments that I've seen, um, I I don't think that. I don't think that shredded office paper really is is much of a threat to bedding. Now, I personally don't use a great deal of it, and that's just because I have huge access to um, corrugated cardboard, um, which is probably a superior bedding, just because it doesn't mat. You know, it provides um, gas exchange uh, because it has you know a fairly good pore space, um, and the worms just love it. Um, you know the um, the starch that's used as the adhesive in it, the waste starch plus the wood pulp products, just makes for a pretty magic worm <laughs> worm bedding. Um, so that's my anecdotal experiment. This has been uh, Ben with Lions Worm Works. Be well.